Would you suggest them going into the hospitality program and why? I would say yes. There's a lot of opportunities. There's not, it's not just restaurants, hotels. There's... Hey, today we got an awesome guest on. We're highlighting students in hospitality. This young man is actually a little bit of an overachiever. We talked about having him on to have him talk about the hospitality programs in college. Well, he's recently graduated and he's already on his way to employment with a great hotel company. And we're anxious and excited to hear how things are going for him. Hey, Jaden, how are you? Hey, Ted, thank you for inviting me on this podcast. I appreciate that. And I can't wait to tell you more about my story. Man, you know what? I think you and I got to connect at the Hunters Conference in Atlanta maybe a year or so ago, maybe this year. I, time flies when you get the gray hair up here, right? Um, <laughs> and I know we talked about having you on. I think we had a few scheduling blips and we tried to tried to make it happen, but we got you now. But since then, you've actually finished up your degree. You've actually gotten a job and you're well on your way to to making things happen. So before we dive into all of that, talk a little bit about you. Where are you from? What made you think hospitality was the right place for you? And just kind of give our audience a little bit of the background. Yeah, of course. So I'm currently from New Jersey, born and raised, and I lived there all my life. And Penn State was not my, my first choice. That's where I got my degree. I really want to go to UNC Chapel Hill. I tried my best to get in there and things didn't go my way. So, <laughs> so my dad always wanted to go to Penn State. So I applied there and I got in and I went there and it's been a ride ever since. And so Penn State has multiple different locations. So there's the main campus in the middle of PA, then a bunch of satellite campuses around. So my first two years, I was at a satellite campus in Lehigh Valley. And it was kind of messed up a little bit since COVID, like that transition, my freshman year was all virtual. Then sophomore year, I barely knew anybody trying to get to know people. You know, it was a smaller campus. It was, it was not the best, but once I got to the main campus, it was, my eyes opened up. It was completely different. And I had to make sure to like get to know my surroundings and try to meet new people and just do whatever I can to make my college worthwhile. And I did, I got involved with many things. And let me backtrack a little bit. At first, I was a computer science major, and I really wanted to make video games. That was my main goal. And once I got through it a little bit through freshman year, and then I kept going with it, and then I was like, this is not for me. I cannot do this anymore. And I talked with my parents to try to see, like, what, what fits me. And they'd say I'm, like, just like my mom a little bit. And my mom's, like, a salesperson. And I tried something with hospitality and I loved it ever since. And I just kept doing that throughout college, going to networking events, doing interviews, internships, and joining clubs, doing leadership roles. It was just, you know, I even joined a fraternity. It was just amazing, honestly. And then got to senior year, graduated, got this good job with Sinesta Hotels and just loving it ever since. And I'm glad I joined it. And I'm glad I went to the Hunter Conference as well. Wow. That is awesome. Because, you know, most of the folks that, that come on our our show as guests, you know, they find that hospitality wasn't necessarily where they were starting either. You know, they always said, hey, I took a few turns and twists and all of these good things. And somehow or another, I ended up in, in the hotel and I absolutely love it. You know, and what we find is that with most people in the hospitality industry, you either love it or you hate it. Because you're always dealing with stuff that you didn't plan for. You're dealing with people and you're dealing with what kind of stuff they're dealing with for that day. And it's just a rough, it's, you know, it's really a rough place to, spay, to, to be in if you can't take the, the ups and downs and, you know, the highs and lows of people. So I'm glad to hear that you are loving hospitality. And uh, before I dive into the new job, tell me this. In the hospitality curriculum over at Penn State, did you have a favorite course that jumped out at you that kind of, you know, really pushed the, the thumb a little bit more on the hospitality uh, career? Oh, yeah, for sure. There was this one. It was a capstone class. It was called HM430, which is like food service operations. And it was once a week. It was from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. So like an eight, nine hour class. And 
the first five weeks, it was training to understand. It's pretty much you run a restaurant. And it's the highest average check in state college. It's like $26. And it's fine dining. So you have to learn how to be a manager, do front of house, back of house, even set up and then break down. So every day is the first five weeks was training. Then once we got into the management days, it's like a team of five. There's five management groups. So my team was first to go. And we had, I think it was like a Jamaican or Caribbean style themed dinner we had. And it, we had some good desserts, good uh, entrees. It was amazing. And I was the back of house manager and I was a little sick that day too. And it was, it was rough. I felt horrible. <laughs> it was so bad, but like, it really taught me how to get through it and understand the back of house industry. And that day actually is when I got invited to the Hunter Conference by, by Anna Blue. And it, it was amazing. And that just, it really taught me how to understand the fine dining industry and then the guests and what you have to do to make the operations flow and go through problems too. Especially with that first dinner, we had an issue where the credit cards weren't being authorized. So we had to write all their credit card numbers down the guests and the guests hated it because it was like a little sketchy in a sense, but we had to do it and we had no clue what was going on. <laughs> and my professor handled it a little bit, but like it was just, it sucked for our first dinner. Like that's supposed to be the, the grounds of what's the rest of the semester supposed to look like. And it just, I don't know, it was just rough doing that every week for eight, nine hours and really, and getting, not even getting paid for it either. It was like free labor, but like it really taught me a lesson on how the industry is. And now I don't want to do food and beverage ever again. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah. that's real world stuff, right? That's it what is. actually happened. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's what hey, everything can go down, the power can go down, and you got a, a restaurant full of guests, you know, how how are you gonna get paid for all the food they got on the table? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so so that that sounds like that's a great class. I, I like that class and I didn't even have a chance to look at it. <laughs> it's worth it, honestly. It was a great class and I'm glad I had to take that, honestly. Yeah, that is cool. Hey, let me give a shout out to my sponsor real quick, Jason, so they'll keep covering our show. Otherwise, we won't be able to have great guests like you come on. <laughs> THM View is this episode is being sponsored by Recovery. If you've ever experienced a home fire, you know how easy it is to lose everything overnight. Well, the Recovered app is a new app that allows you to record everything in your home, store it in the clouds for easy retrieval, should disaster strike, versus you having to recall all of your household heirlooms, your pieces, jewelry, etc. It allows you to settle your claim so much faster with your insurance company, takes the headache off of you. Check out the Recovered app today. There's a promo code that's going across the screen right now. Click on it, get 50% off your first year subscription. And as always, we love to have your feedback on all of our guests. This episode here with Jason will be on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And as well, we ask that you follow us here on LinkedIn. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can keep up with all of the great episodes that's coming as well. So Jason... So you got a day in the life in the operation of a restaurant, fine dining. And I know the feeling about that free labor because I've been in that spot too, where it's like, man, we're not getting paid anything. We're doing all of the hard labor and everything. So that's that's a tough place to be, but that's probably one of the best learning experiences that you've had. For sure. It is. It really taught me the food and beverage industry. It really did. Yeah. Yeah. Now let's fast forward a little bit. So, this past May, you finished up at Penn State and you graduated. When, when did you graduate? It was May. So we had two graduations, one just for my major, May 4th. And then May okay. 5th was like all the majors within that one college. Okay. Okay. And then now you being the overachiever, you just couldn't wait to come on the episode to talk about looking for an, an opportunity to work. You went ahead and found a job. And then when did you start? Uh, employment with Senesta? I started June 17th, about a month ago, a month and a half ago. Okay. So you found the spot with Senesta and what do they have you doing? So I am currently a lodging development manager. So I work under regional vice presidents and try, I be, I'm cold calling pretty much most of my days and trying to set up appointments with hotel owners to try and get them to franchise with us. 
and I get to travel a lot. Like my first five weeks, I traveled to at least seven or eight states, which was insane. I never did that before. And it's it's awesome. I get to see all of the, because my territories are the Midwest, North Midwest, and Canada. So I get to travel over there a lot. And it was amazing. And I get to meet with these owners, network, do VIP events. And it's just awesome. It's it's really a great a great job to have right out of college. Wow. That is awesome. Sounds like, sounds like the uh, you've got the the hospitality buzz going right now. You're gonna you're gonna do real well in this business. <laughs> I hope so. I'm trying my best. <laughs> <laughs> so you're so you're making cold calls during the day. You're making trips and visiting different markets that you've got responsibility for, and trying to conjure up energy for the Sinesta brands and trying to expand the line, right? Yep. That's how yeah. it is. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's, that sounds like a great ground floor opportunity because what in essence, you're going to learn the development space. You're going to learn it from the ground floor. And you're going to be able to understand all the little twists and turns that you have to take to try to get hotel owners to, to latch on to the Sinesta brand. It is challenging too. It's like since Sinesta is not as well known as like a Marriott or a IHG or Hilton, it's harder because we also just recently started franchising in October 2021. So it's only three years in, and we've been at, we're an 85 year startup, three years in franchising. So it is hard to get our name out there, persuade these hotel owners. It's worth the challenge. Yeah. Now, is there a particular brand within the Sinesta family that you're really excited about? Uh, so I am on the select service side. So I like, I would say our Sinesta Essentials. They're more of a kind of upper mid-scale property and they're bigger, they're nicer. And it's e kind of easier to convert, but not really the same time. But I usually have had the most luck with trying to convert those those uh, properties with the owners. Yeah, yeah, it's, that's interesting. There's so many brands that are coming on to the market these days, it's hard to keep up. You know, the, the, extended, the extended stay market has been really hot and it seems like there's more and more major hotel companies jumping into the extended stay market as well. So it's, it's hard to keep up with all of the different brands that are out there. And you're like, man, when did that come on online? And how long has it been online? So it, it's really an interesting thing, but you know, we play in the hotel uh, renovation space. So when hotels come up for their PIP, which you'll probably know that term soon, if not <laughs> as soon if not already, uh, the property uh, improvement plan, you know, when they come up for those, we're a third party group. We help companies execute those renovations. And we also help companies do uh, major maintenance capex, like the chillers and elevator retrofit and things of that nature. So you're going to um, you're going to find out real quick all of the all of the different nuances that go with folks talking about switching over and, and changing the brand or changing the flag and things like that. Cause there's a lot of stuff involved with it. So let me, let me uh, switch gears a little bit. So if you were talking to a high school student right now, that's about to graduate, would you suggest them going into the hospitality program and why? I would say yes. There's a lot of opportunities. There's not, it's not just restaurants, hotels. There's many things you can do. And I would just tell them honestly to allow yourself to make mistakes because that's the best way to learn and the best way to grow as a person. That's what I've done. And I just make sure I take risk and put myself out there, especially you're in college. That's your time. You need to open your eyes up to the world and really allow yourself to do many things that you thought you couldn't have. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think, a lot of high schoolers are always, you know, man, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know if I want to go to college. And I think the hospitality space is a great way for them to kind of explore a lot of different roles within one location, because we've had guys on that are now president and CEOs of the hotels, but they started as the doorman, you know, or they started as a dishwasher, you know, or they started cleaning and, and turning rooms, but now they're like running the whole hotel because they know each and every piece of the job. And that's what I think hospitality does. It lets you kind of move around in a whole lot of different things 
And before you know it, you find that thing that really clicks with you and you can go ahead and, and, and excel in that area. So I think uh, I think the hospitality space is a great place for high school seniors to consider as well. And I think it's just putting something out there for them to think about, because a lot of times I don't know, you know, high school, you don't know if you really want to do this or that anyway. Right. So it's, it's good to have somebody like yourself who's younger because guys like me, they don't hear me. Right. Who's younger. They'll they'll receive what you just said a lot easier than they would. They would uh, me saying that. So I got I've got one more thing I want to I wanted to run by. You, you got any uh, any aspirations to be a hotel owner? Um, honestly, I didn't think about that. I didn't think about that yet. <laughs> <laughs> because like once I joined the hospitality program, I wanted to be a GM the whole time, like throughout the college. Okay. And then when I went to a Hunter conference, I just development was opened up to me and it really right. persuaded me to be on that side of things. And then I made yeah. sure to find a job that's perfect and pe- already people that I know and connect with. And it was just a perfect opportunity for me. But after understanding all the legal aspects and everything that goes into hotels being switched to flags or coming up as a new construction or new build, maybe I could get it to being a hotel owner, but not anytime soon. I, I still have a lot of learning to go, but it's, it's cool. It's pretty cool to own a hotel. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, think about it. As you kind of move through the jobs, right? You're acquiring, you're acquiring all that skill set, you know, all that expertise. So you get to a certain point, you say, man, you know, what is it that I don't know? You know, because you kind of experienced a lot of things and you could you can make that leap. I, I personally think the hospitality a hotel ownership is a great is a great place to be. And uh, being in a place where you can learn a lot of the uh, the nuances and the twists and turns like in Sinesta, I think it's a great opportunity for you. So just keep that in the back of your mind. I know we're a long way from there, but. You know, as you kind of move through the ranks, because I know you will uh, think about that and keep that on the keep that on the radar. I will for sure. Thank you. I appreciate right. that. Yep, yep. So, hey, Jason, I want to thank you for giving me a few minutes of your time, and to all of our student listeners out there, if you're close to finishing up your hospitality degree and interested in being a guest on our student segment series, please reach out to us send us a note. We'd love to have you on. We'd love to highlight you and we'd love to get you in a place where folks can talk to you about possibly joining your team and, and getting going in the ground floor in the hospitality space. Um, Cause we know there's some companies out there looking for great talent and, and guys like uh, guys like uh, Jaden make it easy for them to make that decision. So, man, we're really proud of you. Congratulations to you on the graduation. Congratulations to you on, uh, finding that first job, and, and uh, sounds like you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be doing well. Thank you, Ted, and thank you for the support. I'm always going up, and you're always going up as well. And thank you again for allowing me to be on this podcast. This is my first ever podcast, and you're doing great things. Thank you again. Yeah, well, you have a great day, man. Enjoy. It. Good luck to you. This has been another Ted's Hospitality Minute, and uh, we will see you guys next time. Please. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check us out on LinkedIn. And this episode with Jaden will be on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And as always, we appreciate all your thoughts and feedback. You guys have a great day. Ted's Hospitality Minute is sponsored by Recover It. Don't wait for disaster to happen to wish you had done this.